So before we actually get into today's video, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com because, as you can see, they have hooked me up with a load of fresh shirts for this year's World Cup. I've got the England home kit, the England away kit, and also a nice little retro shirt. And you can do exactly the same if you head to JerseyFIFA.com using the link in the description down below. They also do the same for club football as well. The latest home shirts, away shirts, but also some really nice retro kits. If you are interested, head to the link in the description down below and use code JerseyFIFA for a discount when you order. Now into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where we are edging closer and closer to the January transfer window. And as you guys know, this Manchester United squad is far from complete. It's far from the squad that Eric Ten Hag wants. So over the course of January, maybe before then, maybe after then, we will be talking about some players that Manchester United need to bring in. But before they do that, they need to sell some players, because if not, the squad is going to have too many players, uh, the wage bill is going to be too high. So today I want to look at five players that Ten Hag needs to sell, uh, kind of in this next step of the project of rebuilding Manchester United. Because there are some players at the club which quite simply don't fit. First up, a very easy one, a very self-explanatory one, Phil Jones. I don't really need to go into this from a tactical point of view. We know by now that he is not Manchester United quality. He had a lot of potential when he was signed back in 2011. A lot of potential, but after over a decade at the club, he's never reached that potential, and mainly because of injuries. He is just never available. Now, yes, he done a good job when he came into the, uh, into the team last season, out of the cold. He done well in a couple of games. He isn't Manchester United quality. He's never really going to be. He is past that point in his career. Far too injury prone. Manchester United can't rely on him, so in my opinion, he should be sold. I don't think there's any question over this one. I think everyone will agree. Next up, another player who I think a lot of people will agree with is Harry Maguire. However, you might be a little bit surprised that I'm saying it, because I am a big Harry Maguire fan. I think he is a really good centre-back. I just think he isn't right for Manchester United. In terms of kind of what we look for, or what Eric Ten Hag looks for in centre-backs, look at Lissandra Martinez. Someone who, one, is very good on the ball, uh, good under the pressure, good at dribbling with the ball, but also defensively, very aggressive in the way that he plays, but also very quick, very agile, good on the turn. Does Harry Maguire come into the team and tick any of those boxes, not really. And so the other option is for him to play right centre-back. What does that player need alongside Lissandra Martinez? They need recovery pace, they need to be a good reader of the game. Again, Harry Maguire isn't either of those things. Personally, like I always say, I do think he's a good defender. I think Harry Maguire is a good defender, and I think there are clubs out there where he can perform at the top level. Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag's current project not that. It's just, it's just the wrong match. It's the wrong club at the wrong time, the wrong player. So Harry Maguire should look for a move. We saw for England at the World Cup. We saw for England at the Euros. We saw for England at the World Cup before that. A really good defender, isn't there? Someone who in the right system, where the system is a bit more suited to him, perhaps where he gets a little bit more protection, a really good defender. So I think, I think he should go somewhere where he can play Champions League football. He is that level of defender. Perhaps a team like Atletico Madrid perhaps suits him in terms of a slightly more defensive approach, so he gets a little bit more protection, he's not asked to play a high line, perhaps a club like that could work. In terms of where else, perhaps you could let me know in the comments down below where you think he should go, but for Manchester United moving forward, Harry Maguire isn't a player that needs to be at the club. He cost a lot of money, he had a good couple of years at the club, but the last 18 months has kind of declined, confidence not there, the fans just don't really like him. It's time for him to move on, get some game time somewhere else where I do think he can be a good player. So like I said, get in the comments down below and let me know what you think, what sort of club you think Maguire should go to. I know there's going to be trolls that will say like Barnsley or something. Maguire's a very good defender. A very, very good defender. He has proved it a lot during his career. So let's be realistic. Where do you think he could go? Same for Aaron wan actually. Another player who, for me, is a really good defender. And actually, I'm recording this the day after the game against Burnley in the Carabao Cup. He put in a really good display. Uh, good on the ball, good one-touch passing. It was nice to see. However, again... In terms of, it's the wrong player, the wrong time, the wrong club. Defensively, an absolutely brilliant defender. In terms of, if you want a defender in a wide position... Oh, that's the wrong player. A defender in a wide position like this, defending a one versus one up against a winger, you will not get many better than Aaron wan -Bissaka. We've watched him pocket Raheem Sterling plenty of times in his career, uh, Kylian Mbappe. Now the best player on the planet, we've seen Wambasaka keep him quiet. He's a really good one versus one defender. The problem comes on the ball. He isn't comfortable playing out from the back when put under pressure. Um, in terms of like two touch passing, close control, not his strength. Progressive passing, he doesn't really do that. And if you look at what Dallow has done for Manchester United at times this season, he has played in a slightly more inverted position, looking to get the ball forward from there. Wambasaka doesn't have the skill set for that. 
Now, I've seen Wamasaka being linked with a team like Wolves. Again, a team where the focus is a bit more on the defensive work rather than the attacking work. I think it really suits Wamasaka. I think, again, a quality player. I actually really like him, personally. Uh, he's just one of those players, you know, when you get a soft spot for a player. Wamasaka's that player for me. I really like him. But, again, for Manchester United, moving forward, this idea of Ten Hag wanting his team to control possession, dominate the ball, occasionally play with inverted fullbacks, not wan game, never really going to be. I think he's improved a little bit when we've seen him under Ten Hag, but it's never really going to be his game. So in my opinion, it's time for him to be sold. And I think you'd get a decent bit of money for him. Because, like I said, I think he's a good player. So I do think you'd get some decent money for him. Another player who you'd probably get reasonably decent money for, especially after his contract was just extended, is Fred. Now, yeah, again, with several of these players, like we're saying, Fred is a good footballer. He gets kind of trolled and criticised a lot kind of that McFred label, he's a very decent footballer, he really is, but he just doesn't fit into what Ten Hag wants. And now you're seeing a pattern here, that this Manchester United squad has a lot of players who are good footballers in their own right, but they're a bit of a jumble, it's a bit of a mess, the squad is a bit of a kind of three or four managers attempting to build a squad, all put into one, it doesn't work. And Ten Hag is now left with a squad where so many of these players just don't fit into what he wants to do. Fred is another one of them. If you look at the two midfielders in the Manchester United system, the Eric Ten Hag system, You've got your holding midfielder, you're kind of your anchor, who holds the play together here, he's kind of the deep point, but he's also good at progressing the ball forward. And then you've got the other midfielder, who should be press resistant. Ericsson isn't there yet either, to be fair. But press resistant, but also a good ball progressor, really tidy with his passing, good at moving the ball forward through the lines. Does Fred tick either of those boxes? No. Is he a good anchor man to sit in front of the defence? No, because he's really bad in one versus one defensive positions. And is he a good ball progressor? No. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder, realistically, a hard-working player. Is he Manchester United quality? N no, quite simply, he isn't of that level as a footballer. He's not complete enough as a midfielder. However, again, he is a player that could do a job for another club. In terms of where, I really don't know. It's not something I've thought about too much. So again, maybe you guys could get in the comments down below and help me out with this one. What sort of club would suit Fred? What sort of system? I think his best time at Manchester United has come in a 4-3-3, when he's been given, like I said, a bit more of a box-to-box -box license, that ability to get forward. I think if he could do that for another club, then whatever club that is would get a good player. We saw him contributing some goals from forward areas last season. We've even seen it this season to an extent. So again, I think he is a good player. Unfortunately, does he pair up Casemiro in this midfield and lead Manchester United moving forward? In my opinion, he doesn't. Again, you probably would get a decent bit of money for him. He has a lot of wages, so again, it'd be good to get, off the, get him off the wage bill. I just think he isn't what Manchester United need. Again, a good player, but it's the wrong club for him. It's the wrong manager for him. It's the wrong system, the wrong setup, which means that he should be moved on. He's got plenty of years left in his career, so he can keep performing, keep improving but probably not at Manchester United. Last up, and this is probably the most controversial of the lot, David De Gea, and it's the reason I've left it, left it till last, because if I put this first, I know a lot of you would have clicked off the video, because a lot of people do really love David De Gea. I am a, I'm included in that. David De Gea has been a brilliant servant for Manchester United. However, again, if we are talking about how Ten Hag wants to play moving forward, does De Gea do and fit what Ten Hag wants? In my opinion, he just doesn't, unfortunately. What Eric Ten Hag wants is his defence to play a nice high line, hence why players like Maguire and Phil Jones don't fit at the club. But when you play a high line, it means that your goalkeeper has to be proactive in the way that he goalkeeps. He needs to be sweeping, coming off his line and dealing with long balls over the top, getting rid of the danger before it ever really happens. With De Gea, that doesn't really happen. He is a goalkeeper that likes to operate near his line, so from that point of view it doesn't work. Something else that the modern day goalkeeper needs is an ability to deal with crosses. It's always been a big thing for goalkeepers, and it has always been a thing that David De Gea has struggled with. United currently, especially with Lissandra Martinez being a little bit shorter, need a commanding goalkeeper. Someone who can come out, claim crosses, take the pressure off the defenders. Again, De Gea doesn't really do that. And then on the ball, United want a goalkeeper that can play the ball out from the back, and it's just not how De Gea plays. I would say he has got better at it. I think under Ten Hag this season, we have seen an improvement in his passing. But in terms of if you watch someone like Edison or Ramsdale, the way that they clip passes out to the fullbacks is really impressive. De Gea doesn't do that very well at all. But also, Edison in particular, his ability to just pass the ball and completely take out nearly the entire opposition team just with one straight kick down the pitch. De Gea doesn't really have that, and I think Ten Hag wants a keeper that can do that. That isn't David De Gea. He has been a wonderful servant for Manchester United and helped his team through some really tough times. 
There are some seasons where genuinely I think United would have been mid-table if it weren't for David De Gea. However, you can't afford to be too sentimental in football. Yes, there is that side of you that wants to go, but he's been so good for Manchester United for so long, they should keep him. He isn't at that point anymore. He's not good enough on the ball, he's not proactive enough in the way that he defends, he's not great at claiming crosses, and I'd argue we've even seen a drop-off in his shot-stopping. This is the wrong club for him at this moment in time. Again, where should he go? I don't know. Wherever he does go, they will get a top-top goalkeeper. Because David De Gea he is a wonderful goalkeeper. One of the best goalkeepers the Premier League has ever seen. In Premier League history, David De Gea is right up there as one of the very best. He's one of Manchester United's best ever goalkeepers. And probably a bit of a club legend. That probably is how he will be remembered. However, for how Ten Hag wants to play moving forward, I don't think he is the right man. De Gea, not proactive enough, not good enough on the ball. Maguire, too slow, not good enough on the ball, not good enough on the turn, not aggressive enough. Phil Jones, not available enough and also just not the quality. Wan Masaka, the wrong sort of style, not a ball player, someone who's going to help you really dominate a match. And then Fred, someone who just feels like a square peg fit, trying to fit in round holes at the moment. So that is why they are the five players that I think Manchester United should look to sell. Whether that be in January, of course you can't lose all of them in January because you can't replace them. Or in the summer, for me, United need to get rid of these five players. Get them off the wage bill, sell them for however much you can get for them. They can all go on to have good careers for other clubs. And it leaves Ten Hag with then space to try and rebuild this team in the shape that he wants it. In the way that he wants to build this team. Like I said right at the start, this is a squad jumbled of three or four different managers attempting to build a team. Ten Hag needs to get rid of a load of the players and build his own new team, which we will look at in the future. How he can do that, who he can bring in. But in terms of today's video, those are the five players that I think Manchester United should sell. For me, they would be the top five. There's probably more as well, which you can come on to. But for now, those are the five players that Manchester United should sell, in my opinion. But as always, I want to hear your opinion as well. So make sure to get in the comments down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one.